Hi, everybody. Uh, before I take any questions, I just want to uh, thank all of you uh, for um, persevering with us through this year and doing all this on Zoom. And uh, it was very different, obviously. Um, you know, we, we had to do what we had to do. But um, I like this job a lot more when I actually uh, get to see all of you and, and uh, speak with you um, face to face. And there's just a much more personal feel to it that way. And hopefully, uh, We'll be back in that uh, that dynamic next year. But thanks for all your patience and for uh, doing the job that you guys do. Uh, always enjoy working with you, and uh, let's try to be back together again next year. So uh, with that, I'll uh, answer any questions that you might have. First question for Steve is from Jason Dumas, Cron 4. Hey, Steve. Uh, I'm, I'm about sick of these Zoom calls, too, so hopefully that changes next year. <laughs> Uh, our question is, you know, I guess how difficult was it this year and then how difficult do you think it will be this off season? kind of just managing the, the, the timelines, you know, next year you'll probably have two lottery picks if everything goes as planned percentage wise. And then you have James coming back and then, you, you know, you have Steph in, in the middle of his prime this year was just James, obviously. Next year might be a few other really young guys. How difficult was it, and is it to kind of navigate both of those factors moving forward? Well, you know, that's the job, Jason. I mean, every year is, is totally unique. Um, I know my first year, um, the difficult part of navigating the season was to have to coach um, a, a – a player like David Lee, who had started and been an all-star, for me as a first-year head coach, to go to David Lee and say, you're not going to be starting anymore. David deserved better, frankly. you know. Um, but he got hurt. Draymond played out of his mind, earned the spot. That season was very difficult on, on David Lee. Um, he ended up hel helping us dramatically in the playoffs. Uh, we win a championship. It all worked out right. But my point is, that was the challenge that year. You know, how do you take an all-star player and, and tell him he's going to come off the bench? That's a difficult thing to do as a first-year coach. The next year was something different. This year it was, it was something different. Every year presents its challenges, and so you have to embrace each season um, as, uh, for, for what it is and then navigate your way through that and try to help your players be the best versions of themselves. And um, so this year everything changed with Clay's injury. Um, and, and that was the challenge was to to say, okay, how how can we be really competitive, um, but also you know try to uh, bring our young players along at the same time, and that was I think um, a, a worthy goal because to to be where we want to be when Clay comes back, we need these younger guys to be pretty good. So um, was that easy? No, it was not easy. Um, but you see the benefits um, as you go through the season. You see what Jordan Poole meant to us by the end of the season. Think how much better of a team we're going to be um, next season with Clay back, knowing that Jordan developed the way he did. Um, and so as it relates to James or these two first-round picks or one first-round pick, it's the exact same concept. Um, you know, you, you want to bring guys along so they can help you. Now, the difference next year is, you know, knock on wood, Clay's healthy. We come in from the start. Uh, it's a different mindset. New season, a uh, new set of circumstances. The mindset is let's, uh, let's get it done. And whatever that means, then you adapt to that. And uh, that's what coaching is about. That's what being part of the NBA is about. That's what managing a team like Bob does is about. Wes Goldberg, Bay Area News Group. Hey, Steve. Um, you said after the Memphis game that uh, you didn't think that the last quarter or so of the season was a fluke. And now that you've had a chance I'm, to I'm sorry, of, I, missed, I missed that. I said that what? The last, it wasn't a fluke. Like the last quarter of the season was not a fluke. was not a fluke. Right? Yeah. Um, what from that last part of the year do you want to, I guess, sort of repeat next year and build on over the offseason? Well, there was an energy about the group. Um, we were the number one ranked defense. We were the number eight ranked offense. Um, his, history tells us um, if you want to be a championship contender, 
you got to be top 10 in both offense and defense. Um, so to do that for a quarter of the season with the group that we had, with the injuries that we had, was really encouraging. Uh, but um, what did we learn from that? Well, we learned that uh, you know Juan Toscano Anderson's an important piece um, of our team, that he can really help us next year, that Jordan Poole can really help us next year. Um, you know, that um, uh, playing the way we did um, with the, the floor spacing and the movement um, was really effective for us. Um, if you look at our team during the five-year championship run, um, we had a lot of players who really were able to fit, but we had a style. We had an identifiable style. Um, and so that, that's where we need to, to get to is the point where we can, we can be a, a top 10 offense and defense and rely on who we are, which, who, which we saw over the last 20 games, and then incorporate the young guys in ways that not uh, only um, fit in with what we do but enhance what we do. And that only happens with player development and team development as you go through the course of a season. And so that's, those are the circumstances we'll be facing next year, which are actually really exciting because um, if we can start the season like we finished it this year, um, we, you know, only with more talent, we got a real chance, and that's, that's exciting. Anthony Slater at The Athletic. Yeah, Bob was just in here talking about, uh, you know, no plans to trade James Wiseman. He expects him to be on the roster next season. Um, what did you learn uh, through, you know, his rookie season, in and out of the starting lineup? Did you feel you made any mistakes with him? And then as you look for him as a year two player, how do you get the best out of him? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, as far as James goes, I think uh, he's an unbelievable talent and we absolutely should uh, nurture his talent and continue to help him grow. And that uh, over time, there's no doubt in our minds, this guy's going to help us. Uh, he's going to be, a, he's going to be a really good player in this league. Um, so, what we learned, which I've talked about many times, is uh, to expect a lot uh, from a guy who doesn't get a summer league, doesn't have a training camp, and uh, is playing in a brand new set of circumstances during a pandemic um, that, that's you know that, that those are high expectations to expect anybody to come in and get it at, at 19 and figure it all out in a season like this where as an organization ourselves we didn't have everything you know all aligned because of Clay's injury and because of the the uh, turnover in the roster and lack of camp so very difficult set of circumstances for James to enter into and uh, as far as his development, um, he works really hard, um, and our, our coaching staff did a good job with him. Um, there are certain things I can do better, um, putting him in positions uh, to, uh, to be more efficient offensively, for sure. But that's all part of the process. Um, he has to grow. We have to grow with him. Um, but that's all fine. That's, that's, that's how this, this whole thing works. But as I said, the, you know, the, the difference is he'll, uh, you know, next season he'll have a year under his belt. We will have a year under our belts. Uh, we kind of know who we are as a team. We know where we can uh, help him get better and where he can help us as a team. And then it's on everybody to, to make that improvement and, and, uh, and help the process. Next question is from Janie McCauley, Associated Press. Hi, Steve. Hi, Janie. Um, thank you for the nice words. We, I think I can speak for all of us for saying the same to you, and thanks for your patience um, throughout this. Uh, Bob was just saying, Steve, that um, you and Steph maybe met on Saturday to discuss a little bit of, I don't know, exit interview, but also maybe any Olympic talk. And when, when do you expect to sort of hear from him on what his plans are with that? And, and Bob also said... No real doubt in his mind that he can get an extension done for, for Steph this year. It's, as Steph said back in December, he, he wants to be here, maybe, you know, play till he's 40. What, what are your takes on those two things? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously we, we want Steph back in the worst way, and uh, I, there's no reason to think why that won't happen. So um, we're excited about that. Um, we're excited about uh, 
next season, you know, coming back uh, with, um, you know, Draymond and Steph playing at such a high level to finish the season and to, to get Clay back and uh, to have the opportunity to fortify our roster, um, to see these young guys uh, emerge. It's all very exciting. So uh, we, I think that was the general feeling with our players in our exit meetings. Well, it's, this is exciting. we got a lot to look forward to. As far as Steph's summer, he's going to make that decision on the Olympics. Um, you know, what I told him um, and what uh, Pop has told him, frankly, is, uh, you know, take a little time. Uh, you, you can't make a decision like this two days after your final game of the season. So, um, you know, Steph will take some time off and um, he'll make whatever decision he decides to make if he wants to you know, play on the Olympic team or not. And um, it's, of course, um, whatever he decides is great for, for us, for Pop, for Team USA. I mean, it's, you know, players have to, um, they have to go with their heart and, and prepare they, the way they have to prepare and understand their own needs. And, and, um, and so that's all part of the process. Steve, with the tailbone thing, how, how much time, you know, just off, off from not playing, do you think that needs, or have the trainers said that needs to really fully, fully heal up? Um, it's never even been brought up. It's just sort of understood that season's over. It's going to get bad. I don't know if it's going to take a week or a month, but um, you, you saw the way he played the last three weeks. So it's not going to impact him in terms of how he plays. It's it's how long it hurts, you know. So no no real concern with that. Next question is from Kareth Burke, NBC Sports. Hello. Hi, Kareth. Um, Bob explained that he knows this team needs more veterans and that he tried to acquire some but maybe ended up in second place in those those mm -hmm. races. Um, how would more of a veteran presence have, have helped change the equation this season? And what could adding more vets to next year's roster do to, to strengthen you guys? Well, I mean, veteran players win in this league. You know, it's very rare that you see uh, a rookie – to come in and, and lead a team to a championship. You know, Magic Johnson did it. Um, you know, Larry Bird was, came close to doing that. Um, I think maybe of the modern guys, um, Dwayne Wade was pretty good his rookie year. I think it took him, a, you know, a few years to win a title. And, you know, LeBron didn't win a – he didn't even get to the playoffs his first year. So we, we all kind of know how, how the league works. Uh, the, the knowledge you gain in this league from year to year is crucial. And what that means for a team's kind of institutional knowledge as a group is crucial to winning games because these games come down to possessions and uh, everything matters. And so, um, yeah, if we can add a couple of vets, um, that'd be great. We had, uh, you know, during our five straight trips to the finals, we always had great veteran presence and that matters and so I'm of the thinking and the belief that um, Clay's return and our final 20 games will be very much uh, in the minds of potential free agents when they think about where they want to go uh, so whether that means we we get a couple of guys to come or not we'll see but when during our five-year run we got a lot of guys to come here who made you know, really a big difference. David West and Zaza, um, JaVale McGee, those guys all come to mind. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we had, we had other guys as well, but um, you know, that kind of veteran know-how and, and stabilizing influence could be very helpful. Chris Alvarez, ABC7. Steve, um, it seemed, you know, watching Clay on the bench the last couple of games, it seemed like he wanted to go to the scores table and check in himself. I just wonder where Clay is right now in the rehab process. And, and Bob had mentioned he might not be ready for game one. So kind of a realistic timetable and just kind of where he is at also mentally. Well, I think it was um, in a strange way, um, the end of the season for Clay has meant the end of his time apart from the team. You know, um, and even though he was with the team all year, he, he never felt a part of it because he wasn't playing. 
but the season ended and we had our exit meetings uh, the next day and um, it's like Clay you're you're back you know um, you know the next time we get together as a team you're you're part of this you're going to be on the floor now will he be playing in a game yet we don't know um, but he'll be running around and shooting and practicing with us and doing all that we know um, and we'll just have to see where his progress is at that point to determine when he's able to play but emotionally spiritually um, I think it's a huge lift for him to know um, well, we're now all on the same timeline in terms of uh, getting back together when, when we can play basketball again together so it's uh, I think it's a good uplifting feeling for him now he's he's making real strides Monty Poole Steve you guys played your best basketball uh, down the stretch with a starting lineup that played a lot of three on five offense uh, and that Draymond and Loon really weren't guys that teams paid much attention to on that end is that sustainable going in the next year and I know you're going to get Wiseman back you'll get play back but <laughs> that has three, two guys that really aren't scoring threats. How sustainable is that to play good basketball? Oh, I think it's sustainable. I mean, we played good basketball exactly with that lineup. We went 15 and five in the last 20 games with those two guys starting. Uh, number eight offensive rating in the league during that span. Um, that's pretty good. Um, now, is it something we want to throw out there for 40 minutes? No, um, but it's a look that had, again, the number one net rating in the league. So I think what, what we have to think of as we build the team is, um, yes, that can work. It just, we just showed it can work. But how can we get better in terms of, uh, as a coaching staff, are there schemes we can alter? Uh, is there a, a substitution pattern that we can change uh, to help? Uh, is there a player out there, a free agent, who could – fit in better um, with the substitution pattern? Um, do we start a different starting lineup? And, you know, all that stuff is, um, is fairly debated. Um, but what we do know is that Loon really helped us win games this year. Draymond really helped us win games this year. And they played very well together. Um, so uh, I, the, the answer is, um, it works, but we want to get better, and, and maybe we can find ways to improve uh, as we go forward over the full 48-minute game. I mean, I know you said that Draymond's offense is basically gravy, but it seems at times that a little bit of offense from him helps Steph out, creates a little space, and also maybe it helps the other guys out. I was wondering what you thought of that. I agree. I agree. I, I, I think, you know, my point has always been that no matter what Draymond does, he's going to help us win. And that's the truth. Uh, he's so good defensively and passing the ball. But there's no getting around the fact that, um, you know, when he makes a three, makes a couple threes, gets 10 or 12 points, um, we are a better team. And um, Draymond knows that. And um, I think the, uh, the whole point going into next year is, uh, f as for me, as Draymond's head coach, and as a coach of this team, to really uh, encourage, you know, that kind of aggression, uh, but to help that aggression, I got to do more to to help Draymond offensively, and uh, and that those are things that I have to improve upon as as we go into next year that I'll be thinking about, um, and that's what I do every season. You know, I try to think of ways that I can improve my own. Um, job my own coaching what you know how can I help help each individual player and how can I help the team so it's not anything new but it's um but we now have a really good look at this team whereas a year ago we were completely in the dark um, and that's where I think our real advantage lies we we know what we have and we know where we need to go Nick Fredell ESPN Steve Steph and Draymond both touched on this the other night, and I'm curious as to your opinion. You know better than anyone what it takes to win a championship in this league. How far away do you feel like you guys are right now from winning another title? Well, I mean, I saw Draymond's answer the other day. You know, we didn't make the playoffs, so we're kind of far. I actually agree with that. Um, I think it would be arrogant for us, having just missed the playoffs, to say, hey, we're right there. Um, so um, we're a ways away, but we like 
the path that we're on. We love the fact that, uh, you know, all the things I just mentioned, we got Steph and Draymond playing at a high level. We got young players who have emerged. Uh, you know, we know James is going to be better um, with a year under his belt. We got a couple first round picks. We got free agency coming up. Most importantly, we've got Clay coming back. Um, you throw all that together, and I like our chances to make a big leap. But no, we can't sit here and honestly say we're close to a championship because Draymond's right. We got to make the playoffs first before we say that. Marcus Thompson. Hey, Steve. Uh, you, um, you know, we we all know you love bigs and you think about defense and rebounding a lot. Uh, but your team really plays well when you go small. And if you're looking at the West, there's a lot of bigs. Do you, um, did you learn anything new maybe about how to handle that balance this year? Was there anything different than in the past? Uh, uh, you know, having another year trying to weigh when to go small, when to stay big, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, w one thing I learned honestly is that when I really held the players feet to the fire, um, they rebounded well. Um, when we played three or four good games in a row and we rebounded fine and we sort of forgot about it, uh, we'd have a game where we just got destroyed. So part of it is on me uh, to, to have that appropriate fear we talk about every single game from a rebounding standpoint. And I think I need to do a better job, frankly, of um, doing it every day in practice. Um, even if it's just two minutes, even if it's a comment here or there, jolting them. Um, I've got to do a better job of, of helping them on a daily basis understand that if we're playing small, we're undermanned, and all five guys got to engage, and nobody is allowed to uh, go unaccounted for on a possession where they don't box out and we give up two points. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I've learned. Um, and then next year we'll see what the roster looks like with um, with the players we have, the free agents we have, um, and we'll you know it, it, we'll see what combinations we're playing and all that stuff. But we won't know that until next year. As a follow, do you like? Do you think Jordan can do more of a initiator, playmaker stuff uh, next year? Do you see him growing as as that guy off the bench yeah. who can you put the ball in his hands? Absolutely. I mean, you could see his playmaking um, down the stretch. He gets places most players can't get to you know he's so much more than just a shooter um, so he's very dynamic and uh, made great strides so I have no doubt you know if we you know if we have clay healthy um, it's really fun to think about Jordan and clay in those minutes when Steph's Steph and Draymond are off the floor like that's that's exciting doesn't mean it's automatically going to work uh, but you know maybe Jordan Andrew and clay um, together, that's a pretty dynamic group that you got three guys who can score uh, in different ways. Um, and Jordan, with the ability to, to, to make plays, get in, into the paint, and distribute the ball. Um, now you're talking about um, some firepower. That's exciting. Next question is from Carlos Ramirez. Uh, hi, Steve. First of all, thank you for a great season. Uh, it's been a long life dream of mine to be able to cover you and now that I've done it on a daily basis uh, I thank you for that um, what do you think about the playing tournament do you like it or not should it continue to go on well I joked that I you know a month ago that I would hate it if we lost and love it if we won but I, I, I honestly I, I, I love it I think it's great um, I think it's great for the league and what's great for the league should be more important than being um, worried about the eighth seed missing out on the playoffs, so I think uh, I think it should be something we we stay with. Uh, there was more interest in more games down the stretch than than there have been in a long time, and there has been in a long time. And and uh, there were some mini races within teams trying to avoid seventh. Um, I thought it was fascinating as a fan. And uh, now, are there things we could tweak? Maybe, you know, maybe. I mean, I, I thought, um, and this is just being. Brutally honest, and you guys know I, I, I'm usually brutally honest. But um, you know, was it w was it a blow to suffer such a devastating loss to the Lakers and then have to turn around and play a team that just won? Um, yeah, that was tough. 
the other hand, they had to fly across the country, um, and and uh, there was a fatigue factor that came with that too. But there's no doubt, you know, the team that finishes eighth or seventh and loses, um, if you lose in you know in gut punch fashion like we did, it's tough to get off the mat. And um, I think that showed itself in the first half of the Memphis game. They came out, you know confident and ready to go and and we looked like we were still stunned um, from the loss in LA and uh, so as a coach you know that's uh, that's something I recognized wished I wished I could have done a better job you know helping the players get over that loss in LA but is that something the league could address maybe I don't know what the solution would be Um, but all in all as the coach you know as the coach who lost out uh, in the play-in tournament, I'm still a proponent. I think it's really good. And, and as a follow-up, what's your biggest regret and what are you most proud of, of this season as a coach? Uh, biggest regret is just not making the playoffs. Um, you know, and, and as a coach, you always go back and think of things every single year unless you win the championship. There's stuff that you go, man, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. Um, and, and those are the things that you guys are going to want to know, and those are the things that I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but I will tell you there are absolutely things that I regret that I could have done better with. Um, but um, as far as what I'm most proud of is for sure the finish and the fight the guys showed after um, 50 games where we were sort of lost in the wilderness. I thought our guys did a great job of climbing their way out of the hole and, and – um, making the season very meaningful. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. All right, we have time for two more for Coach Kerr. Uh, the first one will come from Anthony Slater, and then Jim Conlon will be the last question. Kelly Oubre is kind of your big uh, free agent, and, uh, you know, his his role fluctuated. He was in and out of the lineup. Um, he did kind of have some success off the bench late, you know, as more of a small ball four. Um, would you like to see him continue with you guys? And, and if he did, what do you, would you envision his role as? Yeah, it'd be great to have Kelly back. I mean, he's, he's really, really talented. Um, obviously, it was, um, you know, tricky at times, like finding the exact right role, but it was tricky for me, honestly, uh, with the entire roster to put the pieces together this year. You guys saw that. It, it, it you know, it, it was a struggle. Um, so, uh, you know, he's a free agent. He's going to have to decide what he wants, um, and we will have that discussion. You know, um, I said it before, um, Clay's going to start when he gets back. Um, so, you know, would, would Kelly be interested in coming off the bench? That's a, that's a question only he can, can answer. So he'll weigh his options, we'll weigh ours, and uh, we'll see where it all goes. But uh, really like Kelly, um, really, uh, you know, think he's got great potential to be um, very helpful um, on our team, and um, we'll see where it all goes for him. Uh, hi, Steve. Uh, you mentioned in relation to the draft uh, last year, the acquisition of Jamal Wiseman, and uh, it was a big coup for you. But this year, sort of looking ahead now in terms of free agency and the draft, are you really looking for that the sort of dynamic sort of guard, the likes of a Colin Sexton type? that can really drive to the basket, that really gives that sort of energy. We saw last year, like, Tyrese Halliburton going at 11th for Sacramento, which is probably a steal in the draft. Is that something you're trying to pick up this year to look for that sort of elusive guard that might go under the radar in terms of a a Sexton or a Halliburton? Well, I think, um, you know, that's really more Bob's job than mine. I mean, as a coach, obviously, I have a voice in personnel and I will watch the guys that our scouts have, have suggested that we select, and I'll put my opinion in. Um, I think the difference this year compared to last year, we'll see where the lottery lands. But you know, when you're in the number two slot, um, it's very different from being in the 11th slot. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're thinking differently. You're thinking about impact uh, long term and about ceilings, about star potential. Because we we all know uh, within a few years, um, you know we're gonna we're gonna need new cornerstones uh, of the franchise, and so if you have a chance to take a guy like James who could potentially be a cornerstone, 
um, then you do it. Um, if we're picking 14th with our own pick, you know, or 7th or 8th or something with the Minnesota pick, well, that changes the, the perspective. Um, it changes your options because the guys who are possible cornerstones are probably already gone. And then you, then you maybe have the luxury of thinking about your roster. Um, and you're more likely to end up uh, looking at guys, um, you know, who have more experience, who are more prepared to play. And that's certainly something we're going to consider. But again, that's, that's Bob's job. I will take part in it, but it's really, you know, his, uh, his ball and, and uh, you know, he's going he's gonna to make the play and, and, I'll, uh, and I'll have 100% trust in him because he's always done an amazing job with the roster and, and with the draft. Um, he's, uh, he's been a brilliant GM and I'm lucky to work with him. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you down the road, hopefully in person.